So this journey was actually, after listening a lot to Abraham over the last couple of years and asking myself, am I moving to, is my vortex calling me? Like, how do I listen to my vortex and move in that direction? By being satisfied now, 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 now. You're making it a big project. You're making it a project like cleaning out the garage that is such a big project that you never even start. You just got to be satisfied now, 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 now. And any subject will do. Do you believe that? Does that make sense to you? If it is true, and it is, that life caused you to ask, and you did, and that you launched it into your vortex, and that your inner being is all over it, and all of the cooperative components have been gathered, and they have. If all of that is true, and that all that you have now to do is to stop doing that thing that keeps you from being in the receiving mode, you don't even have to start doing the thing that puts you in the receiving mode. You just have to stop doing the thing that keeps you out of it. You would be satisfied if you weren't doing that thing that keeps you from being satisfied. You would be satisfied unless you were doing that thing that keeps you from being satisfied. You just would be. So Esther started playing a game with herself where she will find herself in a moment where she really feels satisfied. And the way that's usually first indicated to Esther, she just feels extra happy, sort of lighthearted, extra frisky and funny and fun and lighthearted. But it's a soft and it's a subtle thing. And when she finds herself there, she just milks it. She says, oh, this is one of the, here I am doing that, here I am satisfied. And so once you begin noticing when you do feel satisfied, then you're able to determine or to distinguish when you aren't satisfied. That's the best part about identifying what satisfaction feels like to you. So Esther started thinking about it. One morning she sat with her notebook and tried to think of as many satisfying scenarios the things that come up frequently. And she thought about getting into the monster bus, helping Jerry hook the car onto it, pulling the rooms in, the rooms that extended out, and pulling in all the cables and everything, and stowing everything, and then starting the engine. It had to idle for five minutes before you began moving this mammoth beast out onto the roadway. But then the feeling of pulling out onto the freeway always gave Esther this euphoric feeling of adventure and what this day was going to hold and what they were going to see and what they were going to discover. So she had done that often enough and felt it enough that she had identified and isolated that feeling. So now she's thinking about it and she's, I know for sure that that was a feeling of satisfaction. Then she thinks about slipping into a seat in a restaurant with people she loves and looking across the table at them and feeling the fun that they are about and feeling the happiness that they all feel extra much when they are together and smelling what's going on from the kitchen and acknowledging the beauty of the place and all of the intentionality that's gone into it and that feeling of satisfaction of this moment in time coupled with what's yet to come. Esther has experienced that so many times that she has identified it and isolated it. She knows for sure that that's a satisfying moment. She goes over to her daughter's house and their family and she always rings the doorbell because it makes Hazel come. And Hazel is this dog who has no manners whatsoever. <laughs> and Hazel will come from wherever Hazel has been. Biggie comes too, but Biggie's not as interested in Esther as Hazel is. And then Hazel just greets Esther and greets Esther and greets Esther. The greeting lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. You'd think that it was the most important thing in this little dog's life to see Esther. And Esther just takes it all in. And then Hazel lays on the floor, right down, making it almost impossible for Esther to reach all of the places that Hazel wants to be scratched. And then Esther will say, Hazel, come with me. And then they'll go find a chair, and Esther will sit down, and Hazel will sit at Esther's feet. And Hazel will stay there as long as the scratching happens. So satisfying, not just for Hazel. The scratcher gets satisfaction, not just the scratched. And so Esther isolates that. Often her mind goes to that. The treehouse, 
the magnificent treehouse that looks over the top of the entire county. And Esther can barely see the rooftops of the buildings that are on her 40 acres that she and Jerry had planned and put there. The satisfaction of standing up there and feeling the breeze and listening to the wind chimes and being up in the trees with the birds. Satisfaction that has been identified and isolated and practiced, you see. You have to tune yourself to the frequency of letting in what you want. And your life does not always automatically do that because you are problem solvers and you are problem seers and you are pushers againsters of different things. But if you really take it in that your life has caused you to know what you want and that it's all there waiting for you in its vibrational form and that any moment any moment in which you are satisfied, your path of least resistance is open and the impulse to move in the direction of what you want is there, then you become even an inspired pointer. When you're tuned in like that, your inner being can even begin to think thoughts and offer those thoughts to you. That's where inspiration comes from. That's where ideas come from. That's where the best of timing comes from. Timing, 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 timing. You say, oh, it is so lovely to be in these physical bodies and to be tuned in, tapped in, tuned in with the source who is knowing everything that you want, knows everything that you want, knows where you stand physically and vibrationally in relationship to everything that you want. So your inner being is not only offering you inspiration about where to go and where to be in order to rendezvous with other co-creators. Your inner being is offering you inspiration about a thought that will lead to 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 a thought because you're not right now, this red hot minute, ready for the thought that's going to take you all the way home. Sometimes you have to coax yourself there because you've got beliefs that are in the way. Your inner being will help you bridge those beliefs. Your inner being will help you bit by bit come to believe that you can be or do or have anything that you want. And when you get there, then you know what your mind is filled with? You know what you think about when you wake up? Hmm, what is it that I want? Not how am I going to get there or when will it come or will it come? Your mind is, oh, of all of the magnificent things that I've discovered in my experience on this planet, what do I now want? What do I want to turn my attention toward? What may I desire? Why may I focus upon? Because it's a sure thing the source energy will get all over it. Source energy will help me. I just got a point. And meditation in that process, because I feel like I've been listening to you for a long time. And for, I think, two years ago, Abraham talked nonstop about meditation. So I started meditating the Abraham way, listening to like the air conditioner or whatever. And there's been, even though I did yoga and meditation for almost a decade, I never had the physical response that I'm having through this meditation. So I know that from everything I know from you that I'm communicating with my inner being. Yeah. And I or let's put that another way. I am having reception from my inner being. Just let it be your inner being flowing to you. You're receiving it. Because if you get too involved in communicating, you know how most people when they get talking they don't listen, but when you get listening you listen. So meditation is a listening process. It's a listening or a feeling for vibration. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about isolating, isolating the feeling. So you're focused upon the air conditioner, whatever it is. You know what she's talking about? Some sound in the room that's not very interesting. And so your mind doesn't wander all over the place. And you focus and then your mind wanders. But then you focus and your mind wanders. After a little while, your mind is less likely to wander. And in that not wandering state, your mind is quieted. And when your mind is quieted, then the vibrational content of your mind is not resistant in nature. Because when you're not thinking any thoughts, then there aren't any resistant thoughts. And then you allow your vibration to rise. And as your vibration rises, you get into what we call the receptive mode, where now you can receive what your inner being is thinking in the moment. So that's why we call it the listening mode. If you're so busy asking questions, then you're not listening. And remember, step one and step three are different steps. So don't use meditation as the time to talk to your inner being. Talk to your inner being when you're walking through the parking lot, pretending that you're talking to someone on the telephone. Let your asking and your receiving be different times of the day. And the impulse part is where I feel a little bit hung up. 
Because I have the physical impulse, but not necessarily the inspirational, like, this step next, or go here, or do that. Well, in the same way that because you work in a clinic where you are taking... I'm actually a coach, so I, it's fertility yoga and meditation that I teach. So you are accustomed to thought processes mm -hmm. and thought waves. So would you call yourself action-oriented? Well, I try to actually teach that it's not the action, it's the vibration. It's about getting one before the other. We tease you. It's like you decide to vacuum your floor with a magnificent new vacuum cleaner, but you're just not going to take the time to plug it in this time. <laughs> but you're going to go over the entire rug in the living room. You're going to leave tracks everywhere as you drag it around, but why bother to plug it in? It's just an extra unnecessary step. Of course, that's silly. It's an important step. That thing's not sucking. <laughs> and so you want to tune in and then. And so we feel you to be, true of most people, you're more action-oriented than you are alignment-seeking. And as you just get that alignment first and then, but of course, you see so many of you, Esther would say to Jerry, Jerry would say, let's take a few minutes and meditate, and Esther would say, I don't have time. Because she had these things that had to be done in this amount of time. I've got to get out of the computer, they're going to run a batch, I don't have time. I'm on a time deadline. And Jerry would say, I hear you. And as he would walk away, he'd say, you don't have time not to meditate. You don't have time not to, because a little meditation smooths the bumps out of the whole day. That's just begun saying, if I meditate today, I'm going to have a good day. If I meditate every day this week, I'm going to have a good week. If I meditate every day of my life, I'm going to have a good life. Because it's putting you in the receiving mode where then that broader perspective pours through you. Of course, you know all of that. So why are we having this conversation? Why do you think we're having this conversation? Because there's something I want that's not coming instantly, and it's making me doubt everything. Well, it's what you just said. It's time and run, feeling like I'm running out of time. Yeah. And I went on this journey with the IVF. I did it on my own. My partnership with my partner of six years fell apart because this. it's just been... So this subject, right here where satisfaction or unsatisfied are controllable, this has a bunch of stuff. A relationship that didn't work, didn't get what I wanted, couldn't come to agreement with that person. Okay, forget about that person. I don't care. I don't need another person. I can do this on my own. That's pretty far from satisfaction. There's some revenge in there. There's some a sort of defiance. There's some, I'm going to get what I want. It's not that soft. Can you feel what we're getting at? This is your opportunity. You see, when things don't come as quickly as you want, hear this. Sometimes it's because while what you want is clear, your vibration is far apart from it. And sometimes it's because you're still clarifying what you want. You're still in the process of clarifying what you want. You're still in the process of clarifying what you want. You want to be a single parent, really? No, you don't want to be a single parent. And your inner being knows you don't want to be a single parent. And so it's sin the dog to bite you. Oh, that's a different story. <laughs> but you see what we're getting at? It's giving you an opportunity to really think about what you want. Because you don't have to give up on anything. You don't have to give up on a relationship. You don't have to give up on anything. Do I have to give up on him? Because now, he, as soon as I got on the plane, I got a message from him. This could be a really long, complicated conversation, couldn't it? You don't have to give up on anything. You don't have to give up on anything. But you do have to find a way to just let that busy mind of yours rest just a little bit and trust that through life that you've lived, you've put things in your vortex and your inner being remembers what you want. And you were going to give up on what you really wanted and go a different route. Well, your inner being isn't giving up on what you really want. And so you're trying to go a different route, but your inner being is not giving up on what you really want, you see. And your inner being will never give up on what you really want. But you don't know what you really want until you get into the receiving mode and let your inner being remind you what you really want. Doesn't that make sense? Yes.